What is the solution to climate crisis? How can we reduce pollution? There can be three options. Bring all the development work and business to a halt. That's not possible as our livelihood is dependent on the economy. Second, shift to 100% renewable energy. Now, this is going to take a while as the technologies are still at a nascent stage. Third is to set up carbon markets. Carbon markets are a tool for putting a price on carbon emissions. It allows the trade of carbon credits with the overall objective of bringing down emissions. Carbon market establish trading systems where carbon credits or allowances can be bought and sold. One carbon credit is a kind of tradable permit that as per United Nations standards equals one ton of carbon dioxide removed, reduced or sequestered from the atmosphere. Hi, my name is Dr. Shruti Sharma and today I'm going to talk about carbon markets to you. Now there are two types of carbon markets. The first are compliance markets. Compliance markets are set up by policies at the national, regional or international level and are officially regulated. Today, compliance markets mostly operate under a principle called cap and trade, most popular in the European Union. Under the EU's emission trading system, which is ETS, launched in 2005, member countries set a cap or a limit for emissions in different sectors such as power, oil, manufacturing, agriculture and waste management. This cap is determined as per the climate targets of countries and is lowered successively to reduce emissions. Entities in these sector are issued annual allowances or permits by governments equal to the emissions they can generate. If companies produce emissions beyond the capped amount, they have to purchase additional permits. This makes up the trade part of the cap and trade. The market price of carbon gets determined by market forces when purchasers and sellers trade in emissions allowances. The second kind of carbon market is voluntary market. Now voluntary markets are those in which emitters, corporations, private, individuals and others buy carbon credits to offset the emission of one ton of carbon dioxide or equivalent greenhouse gases. Such carbon credits are created by activities which reduce CO2 from the air, such as afforestation. In this voluntary market, a corporation looking to compensate for its unavoidable GHG emission purchases carbon credits from an entity engaged in projects that reduce, remove, capture or avoid emissions. Now, for instance, in the aviation sector, Airlines may purchase carbon credits to offset the carbon footprints of the flights they operate. In voluntary markets, credits are verified by private firms as per popular standards. There are also traders and online registries where climate projects are listed and certified credits can be brought. While the concept of voluntary and carbon markets has already existed for decades, they are nothing new. They were more well known among climate activists than they were leaders in politics and the finance community. The Kyoto Protocol in 1997 was the first time that international participation in carbon markets started to become more commonplace. But with the US and China being absent from that agreement, widespread adoption remained elusive. That slowly began to change in 2050 when 196 parties at COP21 entered into the Paris Agreement. The Paris Agreement is an international treaty centered around managing climate change, the ultimate goal of which was to limit global emissions and more importantly, to hold countries accountable for their actions and of course, in actions around reducing their carbon footprints. Cap and trade systems emerged as a mechanism to create accountability and as a result, Emission Trading Scheme, which was ETS, became a key platform for trading carbon credits that were issued as a part of CAP system. In India, the Parliament has passed the Energy Conservation Bill 2022 in order, if this is an amendment, in order to establish carbon markets in India and specify a carbon trading scheme. The bill amends the Energy Conservation Act 2001. 
the energy conservation amendment bill 2022 the, it empowers the center to specify a carbon credit trading scheme under the bill the central government or an authorized agency will issue carbon credit certificates to companies or even individuals registered and compliant with the scheme these carbon credit certificates will be tradable in nature other persons would be able to buy carbon credit certificates on a voluntary basis now the two types of tradable certificates are already issued in india rcs which are renewable energy certificate and escs which are energy saving certificates these are issued when companies use renewable energy or save energy which are also activities which reduce carbon emissions limited specifications on the sectors eligible to participate in domestic carbon market it all is also a big challenge linkages with international carbon markets india has been participating in the sale of carbon credits through the clean development mechanism the cdm route and private sector driven voluntary carbon market between 2010 and 2022 india issued 278 million credits in the voluntary carbon market accounting for 17% of global supply according to the greenhouse gas emission special report by s&p global commodity insight with the domestic carbon market now in place it is unclear whether the global carbon credit certificate will run parallel to the domestic ones in addition is there a need to regulate if yes how carbon credits exported for trade in the international voluntary carbon markets Such decisions will impact India's strategy to welcome foreign direct investments in decarbonization activities. Getting the pricing right for carbon credits, the effectiveness of the carbon market will depend on the accuracy of carbon price discovery. If the buying price is too high, it will deter participation, especially for the MSME, micro, small and medium enterprises. If the selling price is too low, there will be no incentive for real emission reduction hence a robust methodology for price discovery and some pilots will be necessary going forward the methodology should clearly lay out the process for price discovery based on sectoral or unit wise emission target it also needs structured checks and balance to ensure market stability and prevent an oversupply or over demand of credits The voluntary carbon market requires even greater efforts as price discovery is more complex considering the variety in project sizes location quality value adds and more The scheme seems to focus on the compliance market providing limited guidance for non obligated entities enhancing private sector participation in the voluntary carbon market needs a more structured and incentive driven mechanism learnings from the global voluntary carbon market unlike compliance markets voluntary markets are usually partially regulated and market driven hence multiple agencies with their own standard eligibility criteria and terminologies exist offset standards including veras verified carbon standard vcs and the gold standard verify the projects and ensure they follow strict rules and maintain high environmental integrity standards however these standards usually only assess the original offsetting project and not the broader ecosystem allowing companies to prioritize whatever makes the most financial sense as india sets the foundation for its domestic carbon market it is crucial to understand the governance structure for voluntary carbon markets with a national steering committee decide the standards or will remain open for the industries to take a call on is still to be decided would there be an interoperability between voluntary carbon credits bought or sold in the international carbon market and the domestic voluntary market is still a question in order to keep global warming within 1.5 degree Global greenhouse gas emissions need to be reduced by 25 to 50% over this decade. Nearly 170 countries have submitted the nationally determined contribution so far as a part of 2015 Paris Agreement which they have agreed to update every 5 years. 
The UNDP emphasizes that for carbon markets to be successful, emission reduction and removal must be real and aligned with the country's NDCs. There must be transparency in the institutional and financial infrastructure for carbon markets transaction. Thank you.